Hello, friends. Welcome back to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. Last week, I made a promise to uh, demonstrate how to create Status Pro baseball player cards using the Avalon Hill method of player card creation. This is from their original instructions from the Avalon Hill games. I'm not breaking any copyrights. I haven't cracked any codes. Um, and the, I'm using the actual instructions that were printed in the game to show you uh, how to go ahead and make the cards yourself if you want to that would be that would fit with the vintage version of the game. So today, we're going to look at the batter cards and how to create those. Next week, I'm going to have a second video on creating the pitcher cards. But the entire uh, video today is going to be on the creation of the batter, the position player cards. All right. Uh, one other thing. Uh, don't forget to check out channel membership in the description for the video. Uh, for this video, I have put a link that you can follow to find out more about becoming a member of my channel. Lots of stuff going on on the members only side, a uh, World Series replay every month and a history video every month and comparing sim features every month. Uh, lots more stuff, discounts on the secondary store, uh, I alert members to sales that I become aware of, of Sims across the uh, hobby. So uh, take a look and uh, see if it's for you. All right, so uh, without any further ado, let's start the process of creating a player card. Now, I'm going to show you uh, what the instructions say, and I'm also going to show you the sort of the judgment call part of the player card creation and how I go about doing that. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, so to show you where I am here, uh, this is the vintage rule uh, instruction pages. Interestingly, it's just four pages, and half of the instructions are about creating your own cards. Here is where we are, and here is where we will start. So the part that we're concerned with here today is everything from baseball batters to figuring the pitcher cards. These two columns, two and a half columns, are what we're going to be looking at and working our way through in the few minutes that we have together. All right, <clears throat> so I'm looking here at a sample of a vintage card. This is Robin Yount, but you could pick any card. You don't even need to have any cards, um, but I'm just gonna show you this so you see what, what one looks like. We're starting in the upper left corner. Now, this is the OBR, which is the base running rating. This is not for stolen bases. This is for base running. Now, the formula here, it says the easiest method is to divide runs scored by times on base. I'm going to bring the camera a little bit closer here so that you've got a shot to see this. All right. So it says the easiest way is to go run scored by times on base for each player in the game or season to be rated and then break them down into five categories. So what the idea here is that you're going to take the um, times on base, then um, divide that number into the number of runs they scored. That will give you a, a number. And then you're supposed to do that for the entire league. And then you'll set up a bell curve, which will look something like this. And you'll take your 
I'm assuming your lower and upper 10%. And then you'll go, so this will be zero to 10. And this will be 90 to 100%. And then maybe you would go from 11 to 30. And then here you might go from uh, 60 to 89. And then you'd have 40 to 59% in here. And your biggest amount, as it says, would be your average runner. You get your C rating. And where most we should be rated. Well... I don't know how many of us are going to do that math. You've got the run score divided by the times on base, and then you get that number, and then you create a bell curve. Well, that's nifty, except that's going to be very, very labor-intensive. Now, in parentheses, it says, as a quick method, this can be almost done by common sense. The descriptors go like this. An OBR A is very fast and runs the bases perfectly. OBR B, strong mobile runner, makes few mistakes. OBR C, average runner and where most should be rated. OBR D, slow and moves mostly on two out hits and extra base hits. And E, very slow, painfully slow, almost never gets there. All right, so you probably have no more than three A runners per team. You might only have two. Uh, and that's what it looks like in the 1979 set that I have. Some have three. I think I saw one with four, but that's pretty rare. I'm thinking that if you were rating the 85 Cardinals, you would have several A runners, but... For the most part, you're going to have Bs, Cs, and Ds. Robin Yount is a B base runner. He might be the best base runner I ever saw in my life, and yet he's got a B. Now, Ricky Henderson is an A. Davy Lopes, A. Uh, of course, this is not a base stealing rating. Not a base stealing rating. It's a base running rating. We'll do base stealing later. So my advice would be to kind of look, consider most of your runners B's, C's, and D's. Your catcher might be an E. Your, your veteran first baseman, Willie McCovey on bad knees, Willie Stargell on bad knees, probably going to be an E. But, and you're going to have a few A's, but most will be B's, C's, and D's. And you can use your judgment to do your base running rating without doing the calculations here. All right. Now we will do base stealing. Now, so for base stealing, this is the steal ability and is measured by steals per times on base and computed over a full season. To get players on the same level, multiply the steals by the games played, then rate. Notice, you're not using the base stealing percentage. This is 1979 data. You can use your baseball encyclopedia for the vast majority of these batter cards. Um... Yeah, I mean, I for the batter cards, you really probably don't need to use baseball reference. This has nothing to do with their success rate. It has to do with their number of steals that they get in an average season. So, You multiply the number of successful steals they have by their games played, and then you rate them. For Robin Yount, that makes him a C stealer in 1979. About average with 10 to 19 steals per season. All 
right. What I, this is confusing. So, basically what you're doing, this also tells you to set up a bell curve. I think what you need to do here is to calculate the number of steals that they get in the season and adjust that for 162 games. So for example, if the person that you're creating a, creating a card for has five steals and they played 80 games, you double it to 10 steals, they'd be a C. That's what you're trying to do here. You're trying to create the amount. See, this requires more of a curve. You set up, you have to get all the players organized, which, hey, if you're good with spreadsheets and you download your data from Baseball Reference and you want to do that, knock yourself out. I think it's easier if you take, you have a player that played 40 games, they've got two steals, you multiply the two. What do you need to multiply 40 by to get them to 162 games? It's four. So then you take their two steals, you multiply that by four. Has only a few steals, one to nine, they'd be a D. That's it. You're done. Quick and dirty. That's what we say. All right. <clears throat> Hit and run. We're going to come back to this, but... Here's where bat control speaks, and herein lies hit and run ability. Hit and run is simply making contact, and the rating is simply based on a strike on strikeout times. The key is the number of strikeouts allotted to the player card. Here is Robin Yount's hit and run number. An HR2, no strikeouts appear next to the K rating rate on the card. HR1, one or two strikeout numbers next to the K rate on the card. HR0 is everyone else. Robin Yount gets an HR1. Why does he get an HR1? We look down at the K rate on the card. He has one number. One number gives you a rating of one. It's that simple. Piece of cake, you move on with your life. All right, and we'll come back to this as well later on when we learn how to do a K rate. Next, classification BD. This relates to getting runs with men on and measures home run ability. Here is where the BD rating is found. It's their clutch rating, basically. Note that when a player is rated BD2, you must deduct one home run number from his regular card rating. BD1 and BD0 have no change next to the HR number on the card. So, this is where they crank up home run numbers in the clutch. BD2, 30 or more home runs in a season. All right, so we look at Yount in 1979. He's a zero. All right, now we come to the top of the column. BD1 hits between 20 and 25 home runs per season, and BD0 is everyone else. Robin Yount didn't hit 25 home runs in 79. He's one of the everyone else's, so he gets a BD rating of zero. Very straightforward. All right, CD. A man's ability to turn a double play. Study each position and rate those who made a lot of play, double plays per game played. CD2, high double play involvement. CD1, good double play involvement. CD0, everyone else. This is a judgment call too. The data for this was pretty difficult to find in 1979. I think they were just doing this on a rating, uh, on a uh, common sense rating. But you could look at the data. You would need baseball reference for this one and see how many double plays people were involved in. CD numbers go here. It's a little misleading as a stat because your double play involvement um, 
depends partially on the number of base runners that your pitching staff allows in a given year. So this makes it look like Yount and his second base partner in 79 Molitor weren't good at turning double plays. And it, the reason, one of the reasons is not that they weren't good at turning double plays. It's that the Brewers pitching staff was pretty good at keeping runners off the bases. So you can judge this for yourself. You can use baseball reference to look at the data and see if you've got a guy that you are uh, kind of questioning. It says below, there is no limit on how many players may get either a BD or CD rating. The first is quantitative and the second usually qualitative. Qualitative. So they're telling you, use your judgment. Here, you're looking for home runs. For the BD rating, you want home runs. For the CD rating, clutch defense, what's your impression of the ability to turn two? I would say, I would make it difficult to get a CD two. That would be my, I would make most people a one, but that's me. All right. Now we move to the sacrifice. So we've done the base running. We've done the stealing. We've done the hit and run. We've done the clutch defense. We've done the clutch hitting, the power rating. And now we're up to the sacrifice bunt and we're gonna do the injuries after that. All right, next up is the sacrifice bunting. Actual number of sacrifices in a season. Now, this is not sacrifice flies, so don't blend your categories. This is only sack bunts. Sliding scale adjustment is needed for those with few times at bats, but not necessary for most players. Okay. So, uh, this is Robin Yount's 1979 data. Robin Yount had 10 sacrifice bunts. So where does he fit? AA, eight or more sacrifices in a season. So based on this, his card should say AA reading. And sure enough, for the bunt, it, uh, for the sacrifice rating on his actual card, it does give him an AA reading. He had 10 bunts, eight or more sacks in a season, and he gets the double A rating. Double B, five to seven, double C, two to four, double D, none or one. Okay, next is the injury rating, and we'll be done with the top half of the card. This relates to how the man was used and his ability to stay in the lineup. We call them injuries, although games missed probably were not for that reason. Robin Yount played in 149 games. That means he missed 13 games. It says he missed 6 to 10 games for an injury 4, which is what he got, although he missed more than 10 games, but they gave him a 4. I want you to notice the number of times already that your judgment is what is creating the card. These are not rigidly adhered to, and that's why I'm showing you the Yount card, so that you believe me when I say there's judgment calls here. Technically, he should be in injury five, 11 to 20 games. But if you make him a five, he's going to be injured too often. So they made him a six, an injury four, six to 10 games. And that's where he falls. So you're using your judgment here. If they're a starter, you might go up one up. If they were starting most of the time, if they were the starting player, it seems like what you're doing is going up a rating from what they actually get on the text here, if that makes sense. So if they deserve a five, but they're a starter, you might make them a four, something like that. 
All right. Next, classification CHT. This rates a batter for his hitting power. As noted previously, batters rated P have power. Batters rated N are normal, while pitchers have their own category. The first initial, L, R, or S, merely informs you whether the batter is right-handed, left-handed, or a switch hitter. So here we are, a CHT, right-handed batter, you out, hit right-handed. They gave him normal power. How do you know if they get normal power or a P rating? All batters who have at least four home run numbers, examples 27 to 30, or who hit at least 15 home runs in the season. It is possible for this rating to be somewhat subjective. Well, among others. So if the batter is a borderline case, use your own judgment. All right, Yount hit eight home runs in 1979. So... He's not going to get the P rating. How, we can double check that. Does he have at least four home run numbers? Well, he's got, if we look at the home runs on his card, he's got 34 and 35. That's only two. So he doesn't get a P rating. R N. All right. Now we're ready to create the hitting numbers and the strikeout numbers and the walk numbers and the hit by pitch and the outs. All right, first thing you have to remember and keep in mind and probably the trickiest part of doing your own status pro cards is remembering that you're using a D8 system. You can't use a D10 thought process. So, your numbers, even though you don't see them necessarily on the card, go like this on the Status Pro cards. And I'm just writing this out, and I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but I need to write it out for myself when I create these cards. Maybe you will as well. Maybe it'll help you. So when you're counting spaces, this is, you go 11 to 18, and then it goes to 21. Then it goes 21 to 28, and then it goes 31, and so on. So it helps me to kind of keep track. Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't do 33. See, that you can make mistakes very easily. 37, 38, and then we go to 41. It's a base 8 system. It's not a base 10 system. So you, and we've lived our whole lives thinking about base 10. Well, now we've got a base 8 system. All right. So, Here's what we do. We're coming back to Yount. And we'll come back to the base 8 system in just a minute. The first thing you have to do is get a factoring number, what they call a factoring number. I have my dollar store calculator right here. You don't need a lot of functions. All right, so you're taking the number of plate appearances which you can get, again, from your baseball encyclopedia just by adding your at-bats plus your walks. And if you want to throw in your bunts, okay. But really, all you need is your at-bats plus your walks. And for Yount, that got me to 626. You take the plate appearances, 626 for Yount, All right, and you divide that number by 128, and that gives you a factoring number. Every batter's factoring number will be a little bit different. Robin Yount for 1979 is 4.89. So we're gonna call that his factoring number. 
And you'll see in just a moment why that's so important to calculate accurately. All right. Uh, now. You're going to take his total number of singles. I'm going to put the Yount card next to where it's written in the text. You take his total number of singles. So now you have to do some subtractions. He's got 154 hits. His extra base hits are 39. 26 plus 5 is 31, plus 8 is 39. So you take 154, his total number of hits, and you subtract his extra base hits from that number. That will give you 115. Here comes the factoring number. You take the number of singles and you divide it by the factoring number. They use 3.8. We need 4.89 for Yount. So you take 115, which is on my calculator, and you divide that number by 4.89. And it gives you 23.52. All right. So now I'm just carrying on here, divided by 4.89. And that will equal 23.52. All right. Now... If you look at a Status Pro card from the pitcher's side, you'll notice there are no extra base hits. And so one of the things that they do is they, they add in singles on the pitcher card. Not extra base hits, but just singles. So every batter card has to be adjusted for that or your batting averages would be too high. So as a result, you're going to subtract 11 from every single result you get. So Robin Yount gets 23.52 singles, but we subtract 11. So now he's down to 12.52 singles. All right. Now, we're going to complete our division for the rest of Yount's hits, and then his strikeouts and his walks, and then we're going to uh, lay out the card. 26 doubles divided by 4.89. So I'm just going to write here 12.52 and then 1B for singles. Now we're up to doubles. 26 divided by 4.89. 5.32 doubles. See how I wrote that in there? Doubles, 5.32. Triples. Well, this is easy. 4.89 into 5 is going to give you one triple number. Home runs, 4.89 into 8. 1.64 home runs. I'll move this up so you can actually see it. Now we'll do walks. 35 divided by 4.89. 7.16 walks. And last but not least, we'll do strikeouts, 52 divided by 4.89. Now we're going to come back. We have to make a couple of adjustments. All right. We leave doubles, triples, and homers alone. 
we don't subtract anything like we did for the singles. But we do subtract for walks and we do subtract for strikeouts. For walks, it says right here, deduct seven from the batter. Well, see that there, deduct seven from the batter. Yount has 7.16 walk chances, so we're going to cross that off. He doesn't have a walk number now. For strikeouts, we're going to deduct 11 from the batter. Well, Yount has 10.64 strikeout chances. We're subtracting 11. He should be at zero. All right, so let's look and see what they actually did. Robin Yount has 12.52 strikeout numbers. Now we're going to come back to our card where we're counting with base eight. So 12.52. So we should go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12.52. Are they going to round up? Let's take a look. He goes from 11 to 25. Not 24 to 25. So they did round up. So as a rule of thumb, what we learned here is that even if you're just at 0.52, you're still rounding up, okay? And I think I know why they do that. So if you're at over 12 and a half chances, you get 13. That runs you from 11 to 25 for singles. Here's your range of singles. You can arrange those any way you want to. Robin Yount, not really a spray hitter, although he's got a little bit more of a pull side here in center field for sure. 1979, I mean, he's primarily a pull hitter, and you can adjust where the hits go as you want to. Um... But this makes sense to me. Now let's look at doubles. So we've, for Yount, we've gone to 25. So doubles will start at 26. How many doubles are there? There should be five. One, 25, 26, 27, 31, 32. So doubles should go from 26 to 32. Do they really? Double the left starts at 26. Double to right ends at 32. That's right on. Notice it's not above 5.49, so they're not rounding up. They're rounding down, and he gets five doubles chances. 26, 27, 28, 31, 32. So that takes care of the doubles. Triples, one. Is it there? Yes. 33 is a triple. Home run should start at 34. 1.64. There should be two of them because they round up. Are there two? 34 and 35. Sure enough, there are two. All right. Strikeouts, 36. Well, we wiped out the strikeouts. Why is there a strikeout there? I don't know. There really shouldn't be based on their formula. Even if we round up on the strikeouts for Yount, that gets us to 11. They still tell us to subtract 11. That should get us to zero. But for whatever reason, they gave Yount a strikeout on 36. Now, it could be that they did that to make sure that he got enough strikeouts to 52. So my guess is, my guess is that they adjusted for the league average of pitchers in the American League 
and were concerned that the league average for pitchers was too low for strikeouts. Pitchers do get a strikeout rating here on their card, but maybe in the American League in 79, the average pitcher strikeout rate was too low, and they thought, well, we better give, if it's close, we better give a number to make sure that they get enough strikeouts. That's my guess. I can't speak to that for sure. All right, with that, the batter card is done with one exception, and that is the error rating. The error rating is uses a chart on the back of the instructions. And it's based entirely on fielding percentage. You find your position. In this case, Yount in 79 was a shortstop. His fielding percentage fell between six, 965 and 974. That gives him an E3. All right. There's one last piece. If Yount was an outfielder or a catcher, which of course he was not, uh, it says if a player did not have an error, rate them E0. So you will have bench players who get E0s. That may be something that you want to fudge. The reason for it is that if you use the bench player out of position, they're going to make an error. You may want to make them an E1 at least to make an error possible. I don't know. That's going to be your call. There's a lot of judgment here, but that's part of the fun. Last but not least is throwing ratings. And this gets back to if Yount was an outfielder or a catcher, but he's not. Common sense is the only factor employed as statistics are unreliable in arms as good arms get few assists as runners do not run on good arms. Well, we now have data on this. If you want to get wonky, you can go to Baseball Reference and look up when the base runners are advancing and when they are not on and on which outfielders. Or you can use common sense. Uh, I'll grab an outfielder card here. Here's 1979 Dave Parker. So he is rated a T5 for throwing. What does that mean? Well, T5, very strong arm. T4, very good arm. T3, average arm. T2, poor arm. Those are your outfield throwing arm ratings. Catchers are a little different. Catchers are rated, here's Bob Boone's card. TA for a catcher, very strong arm. TB, average arm. TC, poor arm. Bob Boone got an E1 at catcher, but a TB throwing rating. Okay, so these are subjective unless you're going to go to baseball reference and try and figure out what goes where, who goes where. Uh, most seasons, I would give Boone a TA, but, you know, again, that's part of the fun here is you're making judgments about player abilities in the time period in which they played. I think that's a good time. I'm kind of a nerd that way, but hey, if you're a nerd like me, congratulations, because you found a great activity here creating your own Status Pro Baseball cards. All right, we have done the entire card now for offensive, for a position player. Next week, we'll come back and do the pitchers. If you have questions, I'm not an expert. I'm just reading the instructions from the published Avalon Hill card-making instructions. I'm not violating copyrights. 
put the gun down, internet guy, and this is how uh, to do the better cards. Next week, we'll do picture cards. If you have questions, please put them in the uh, uh, comments for the video, and we can hopefully learn from each other about this process. Maybe you've got advice if you've done this. Uh, that would be helpful to all of us. So thank you for joining me. Don't forget to click out to check out channel membership. Have a great day. So long, everybody.